I'm going to, to speak about the, um, the objectives of the, the PIC using uh, the Malo Clinic uh, protocol. Uh, the intent of this study was to test this peak structure with the Malo uh, Clinic protocol, submit them to several kinds of uh, loading conditions and uh, several combinations. In this image, you can see that we, we I only bought uh, two ca three cases, one against uh, natural dentition, one upper and lower, and this one with the removal that we make in PIC 2. Uh, for that, as we have uh, a malocolonic protocol, we started to, to do uh, a PIC protocol just to have some guidelines to follow all the cases and they have the same, the same and each one. For the design and the measures, you should have uh, a measure of three by four. Uh, the cantilever should be one tooth and the maximum at 40 millimeters. All of this data, it's not uh, fixed. You can put more or less. This one is very important. Near the implant holes, you need to have more peak because there will be the place where we have more load. In this zone, it's, it's very important because when you have, imagine that you have a, a branch and you have a, a hole in the middle. If you have something, when you have something with, for example, four millimeters, if you have a hole in the middle, it's different to have two millimeters one side and two millimeters the other side because you have a hole in the middle and that is a weakest point. The peak structure finish is very important because, uh, as Dr. Carlos said, it's a, a, a ductile material, it's, it's soft, it's uh, hard but soft at the same time. You need to protect the multi-unit caps uh, with the protection caps. You should grind it with tungsten burrs. Uh, use diamond burrs to increase surface uh, ruggedness. And you must pay attention when you grind it not to have uh, weak, weak points. The thickness cannot be less than two millimeters. Uh, threads can weak the structure, especially when performed vertically. What, what does this mean? When you have the, the peak structure, you have to grind it. I will show you some uh, pictures. You have to grind it like this, not like this, because you weak the structure and the loads are upper, so it will break. Here are part of those cases that I show you. This one is the removable. We, we uh, after the receive it from the, the CAD cam, I cut all the, the, the teeth and grind it and make a rough surface to have more uh, adhesion between the acrylic and the peak. As you can see here, the threads that I make, it was along not in the vertical. This is the, the, the big problem. It was the bonding acrylic between acrylic and peak. That's the, the, the spot where we uh, struggle more to have the best results because some of the, the, the problems, uh, we already uh, think about that before starting the, the study. So you should always protect the, the multi-unit uh, uh, holes, sandblast it with silica or oxide aluminum, uh, it depending the kind of bonding that you are going to use. You have uh, blasted at 45 degrees at a distance of one millimeter. You don't want to, to burn the, the peak with the, um, the, the blast. You should jet clean it with air free of oil we don't have, don't have need to have grease on the structure and you shouldn't steam it because you'll contaminate the, the structure. See what I said about the threads? All of the titanium sleeves are blasted with silica or oxide uh, aluminum. Types of bonding. Uh, for this, I, I want to say just, I will show you some, some brands here. Uh, I'm not making some propaganda. The beginning of the study, we said to Ivibi and Juvora that we are going to start the, the program with all the products that we use in the lab. So 
we started using as we do it with, with titanium. If we uh, uh, find some faults, we change it and do the other way. If we use the metal bond one and two that we have from the beginning and we had good results, uh, we sandblast it with silica, three bars of pressure at 45 degrees. We apply metal bond one, wait 30 seconds. This is very important for the acid to, to, to be part of the structure and uh, grab part of the silica uh, particles. And this kind of bond, the tensile bond strength is weaker than the shear bond strength. See, after we blast it and we put the, the metal bond one, it will be like, like this. If you use the bonding connector, it's the same brand, but it's a different kind of bonding. It's more rich in metal meticulate. We send blast it not with silica, but oxide uh, of uh, aluminum at the pressure of the three bars at 45 degrees. We don't jet clean it. We apply a thin layer and we should wait two or four minutes at the air and light cure it for 90 seconds. This kind of bonding is different from the other one because it's the opposite. The tensile bond strength is bigger than the shear bond. This is the appearance. The other one, it was uh, a little bit shining but it, the, the surface was rough. This, this is all rough. Rough and shining, sorry. The, 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 as I told you, the bonding choice, it depends of the tensile bond that you want to achieve, and the bonding should be as rich as we can in metal, meticulate, because do the bonding between the acrylic and the structure. For the opaque, we use the same one, opaque pink, pink opaque, that is light Q for 180 seconds. This is the, the appearance of the, the structure. It's very important when you do this kind of work here, near the cylinders, you need to go where the cylinders will be inside of the gum. It's very important to this part, all of this part, be very, very sealed, because when you put the acrylic, there shouldn't be any zone without the connector or uh, the, the kind of bond, because it will be a weak point, not for breakage, but from the point of view of infiltrations. At long time, uh, it will be becoming some saliva and some... For the polymerization, we use the, the same machine that we use for the regular acrylic. We, we use it for 50, 50, 55 degrees during uh, 20 minutes. It's a very fine machine and very quick. For the um, preparing of the acrylic, in the beginning we start using the injection system, but it was taking too long and the results, it was, it was the same as uh, pouring. We started using the verticulator and the acrylic which was uh, much better quality than the injection because here the acrylic was too, too hard comparing to this one. For the, the finish of the, 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 the prosthesis, the procedure is exactly the same as we do for the regular acrylic, the, the, um, the pick is, is finished exactly the same. You just cut the, sp the spruce, you place it in the articulator just to check in the, the occlusion. Normally, when you use the verticulator, there is no, no vertical dimension uh, altered. You place the protection caps and finish it with tungsten burrs, silicone rubber, and sandpaper. The jigs that I was saying, it was this one. It's the, the, the place that we put the acrylic to fulfill all the, the structure. Uh, after the try-ins, we, uh, we substitute the false gingiva by silicone. So when you finish the work, 
it's almost just grind a little bit of this excess, use pumice, and it's, it's done. As you can see, I'm always working, protecting the, the multi-unit abutments with my fingers. Here, it was the, the check of the bite, and the finish of the pick is exactly the same as you finish the, the acrylic. To polish, we use the same pumice paste, universal polishing paste, and you can achieve very good results. This one, it was the one against the natural teeth, the upper and lower. This one is with the removal. I don't have intraoral photos. As any study that you start with a new product, we have complications. The, the first complication that we, when we started, the first thing that we, we said, yeah, we are going to have problems with the holes, with the screws, because the peak is a polymer. If you screw it at 15 uh, newtons, the screw almost goes through from one side to the other side. So, as Dr. Carlos showed, we had to invent something and we make the interface between the peak and the button with a titanium sleeve. That uh, we need to change a little bit of the design of the structure. It's not more like metal, but in near the, the sleeves, it will be wider. The cantilevers, as I said, the best is one tooth or at maximum 40 millimeters. We have one case with two and a half tooth uh, in cantilever and we don't have problems. It depends of the strength of the patient. Uh, the acrylic thickness, it's very important because if you have uh, just a small amount of uh, acrylic, the peak is a little bit resilient, absorb some of the forces, so at, at a long time it will be uh, little cracks and it will be uh, veneer addition, uh, addition, the acrylic will fall, fall up. The peak thickness is a problem too, not in front, but especially in the cantilever zone, in that zones that are not supported and they have more load. Unbalanced occlusion is a problem too, and excessive deep bite, as Dr. Carlos said, his uncle is a real machine destroying processes. This was the problem that we had in the beginning, that we before started, we already uh, knew that this was going to happen, but we needed to do it to prove that we had that, that problem. This is the, the thickness of the acrylic. You should avoid this, this kind of, of islands because the acrylic, it will be too thin and will fall out because of the deep, deep bite. The solution for this, I will show you in the next. See here, when I said that we need to seal these parts, because these parts will be always in contact with gingiva, with saliva, and it's a weak zone to have infiltrations. This, this uh, fracture, as you can see, the peak is, is okay. There is no problem, as here. This is a fracture because of the strength of the, of the bite. Solutions for all of this, this kind of, of problems. The first one, it was the titanium sleeves. We reduce a lot of the problems if we, we continue the, the work. The cantilevers, we started to reinforce the zone of the titanium sleeves and start making some peak uh, islands with very good fine uh, finish lines because as I told you, you need to seal all of this because of the infiltrations. The thickness of the acrylic, if there is no space, we leave it in peak, but as we said, uh, with a, a finish line. It's almost like when you start working with metal ceramic, that you have to go have good finish lines because of the, the adhesion. Uh, unbalanced occlusion, 
we started to use the connector because it has more tensile bond strength. Excessive deep bite, uh, we, we make the, the bite in occlusion, far, uh, the, the, bite, the, the bite zone in peak, far from the, the occlusion. Here, some pictures identical as Dr. Carlos showed. This is the, the sleeve. The sleeve goes until half of the cone of the multi-unit. See? So all of this will be in contact of the abutment, and this part will receive all the load of the, of the prosthesis. This is the island that I said to you. It was the, the case that you saw without acrylic, so we make a new one, but with highland, with very good lines to, to seal it. This one, it was an uh, extreme case, another, another uh, prosthesis from <laughs> Dr. Carlos' uncle. We need to add some tooth in uh, full just to have a zone to absorb all the, the, the strength. As you can see, Inside the downside was well, like this. It's all the same. And for me, thank you. Hope you enjoy it and learn a little bit more. Thank you. <laughs>